in conversation with us today is an inspiring personality mrs malvika jinair she holds the all india rank of 118 in the upsc examinations which was held in 2019 she is an alumni of marthoma research school belonging to the icsc 2010 batch ma'am we are truly privileged to have you here with us today congratulations Thank on you. your hard earned success thank you to thank make you. our conversation more vibrant we have uh, to make our conversation more vibrant we have neenu elsa zakri of class 12 joy cherian vergis of class 11 jerin cherian of class 10 irene anna omen of class 10 and myself abhi alex of class 12 without any further delay i request neenu to start the session to start the session my first question to you is Being a student of MTRS right now, I would like to know how this institution, Martha Mar Residential School, paved your path to success. Okay, uh, so I was a student uh, in Martha Mar Residential School. Like uh, she Abhiya said before, I was uh, part of the ICAC 2010 batch, uh, which was uh, actually 10 years ago. So I studied from uh, my first standard to tenth standard uh, in Marthoma Residential School. My essentially my whole childhood was actually shaped by this institution, and uh, it has definitely played a role uh, in in my journey towards civil services as well. And not just that, uh, but also in my personality. I uh, met a lot of uh, there were a lot of encouraging teachers uh, who who were in the school at that time, and they were very encouraging in terms of. Um, approaching academics or in terms of uh, pursuing your extra curriculars all these were very important things uh, for me uh, in marthoma residential school and uh, i also figured out how to um, have that personal style of academics how how i should uh, approach uh, studies everything i figured out uh, while i was in uh, marthoma residential school so i think it has uh, given a huge or an immense contribution which i cannot actually put in terms of concrete words to say Can you tell us about the in most inspiring teacher who have met in MTRS? Uh, I don't think I can name one person. There were a lot of uh, my teachers uh, who were very uh, encouraging to me. Um, I I think uh, there are too many names. <laughs> I don't think I can do it justice by naming any one person. Ah, uh, okay, ma'am. Okay. Could you recollect a unique experience or incident that happened in your childhood that? Have you in that molded your personality for academic excellence? Okay, um, I wouldn't say I was uh, very good at academics uh, from the get go. Uh, while I, I think I figured it out somewhere along the way. Uh, when I uh, started learning, actually, I was a bit dyslexic, like uh, that boy in Tare Samin. Per my C's would go the other way, my B's would go this way. I was uh, slightly like that uh, initially, so uh, I wasn't very thrilled to go to school because I used to get all of this wrong. Uh, but uh, i don't know gradually that changed over the years and the environment i had in mtrs was such an integrating factor for it and i uh, i think i figured it out somewhere uh, later in my high school how to properly study and uh, and gain whatever uh, uh, that ambition or uh, that initiative to study everything i got from there at that point of time so there were a lot of uh, experiences small things here and there a word of encouragement uh, which uh, went a long way i guess uh, in molding that uh, experience and um, at that time i think uh, there was an alumni uh, from mtrs who used to come regularly he was actually an ias officer i think he is in the tamil nadu cadre uh, this was long back when i was in 7th standard this was the first time in mtrs that was i had, uh, which was the first time i was actually seeing an ias officer so he used to come and he used to give these speeches uh, so that was the first time i'm actually seeing somebody in person who was who was in the civil services so um i also saw in our library his uh, interview which used to come in the, that uh, there is a magazine called competition success review so i used to browse that magazine uh, just once in a while so and and that time i saw this particular thing so i think the idea of even pursuing civil services came to me a uh, while i was in marthoma residential school ma'am how can you correlate your graduation your background your work experience if there are any 
and your entry into civil service yeah uh, like i said i had uh, planned to go into civil services much more before but uh, after i uh, i did my 10th standard uh, i i did pretty well i actually uh, had very good marks i think i was the state topper of icic that year so at that point of time i did not have uh, so internet was not that much available i did not do that much research so everybody told me that since you study so well you naturally have to take science so i actually went with science and i like science so i went to the whole entrance uh, thing and i uh, and i cleared um, the bits bitsat examination for uh, the bits plan institute so i went with my chemical engineering degree over there because i used to like chemistry a lot uh, ever since i was in mtrs as well as uh, later on in 11th and 12th as well so that's what happened so uh, anyway at that point i knew that uh, you need a basic degree if you want to write for civil services uh, so you have to be a graduate so um, since you could study anything i thought you know what I was interested at that point of time was uh, chemistry, so I studied chemical engineering. But uh, in my third year, I realized that uh, I was not made for that uh, uh, research kind of life. Which, uh, which, uh, so I did not have any particular interest in pursuing research in chemical engineering or in the field work. So I started thinking about uh, my childhood dream of you know giving a try for civil services examination, and I did not have uh, any work experience. I had just an internship, which was part of my curriculum, uh, which was in J.P. Morgan Sachs, uh, Bangalore. This was when I actually realized, you know, why not go back and uh, reconsider uh, the uh, the the. Um, the dream of pursuing civil services. Uh, so that's what happened. Tell us about the moment you excelled the UPSC rank list. What were your emotions and feelings at that time, and to whom you are most thankful to? Okay, um, so my interview got delayed like anything because of the COVID situation. So it was supposed to happen on March twenty seventh. So that got postponed, and it uh, it was finally conducted uh, all the way back in July twenty eighth. So uh, we ha- and then afterwards you have your medical test. So my medical test was on July thirtieth. So I just came back from Delhi on thirty first, and uh, I was in quarantine. So I had to observe. I'm still in quarantine. So during this time, so uh, we had actually heard this rumor that they they might re- release the results very very soon, but actually it came it took us uh, all by surprise. I was just having a coffee uh, like at eleven thirty or something on that day. Uh, I think it was fourth of uh, August. So and uh, I uh, so that was. Uh, when my husband he was uh, looking through his phone and i saw his uh, expression change so i knew that you know uh, he got the result in his hand he is just not telling me so i just snatched the phone from his hand and uh, i just uh, searched for my number that's how i realized i had made it into the list so my emotions were actually pretty much nothing at, at that particular moment i felt nothing because uh, you do you don't have time to process it so it was only later after all the phone calls came in and after i talked my parents i saw how happy they was and i had some time for myself i realized that what a relief and what an encouragement it was that i had finally cleared this examination the whole process had taken about like more than a year uh, so i gave the mains examination in september now it's august when the results came because of the whole situation so that's what uh, happened i think i am uh, very thankful i guess um, to god I, that is the first and foremost thing you learn in this examination this is such an uncertain examination it's very chaotic there are so many factors involved so many stages so it's very hard like it's ju- it's really 50 percentage you and 50 percentage god so i'm very grateful to god for this entire learning experience then uh, to my family who they were, i'm heavily indebted to them they were very inspiring uh, they were very supportive of my decision to give it uh, even a third time so they were very supportive uh, my sister she was also very supportive then my whole family was behind me my friends were also very crucial um, in this preparation journey because uh, even though some of them uh, who are outside this preparation did not re- directly understand what the challenges were but they were they were also very understanding and encouraging so all these little little words of encouragement uh, little little acts of kindness all those helped and it went a long way in sustaining the momentum for the journey you had that this was your third attempt so what was it that motivated you to push through your previous failures and find the courage to go for another attempt 
so uh, this is actually my third attempt i gave my first attempt in 2017 uh, but uh, i had just graduated in 2016 and i directly i did not have any contact with this field at all so i did not follow current affairs or anything while i was in college so it was a very fresh start for me so i couldn't cover the whole syllabus and uh, just before the examination a uh, month before i got uh, the dengue fever so i was not able to clear that prelims examination but uh, so it was easy for me to justify at that time okay you didn't study not a lot of people do clear it so it was easy for me to uh, find that encouragement to continue in the first attempt but in the second attempt i was actually very systematic i did all the uh, test series everything uh, these coaching institutions tell you uh, i was very uh, thorough in finishing my portions but i took a lot of pressure so there was this lot of pressure even from my family and from myself that you know this was the attempt i had to make it this time so this actually made things very very difficult for me and uh, the, this examination which was the only thing i was doing at that time started to take over my whole uh, life so i got very very stressed and this is the kind of environment you are put in when you go for this preparation because everybody will be doing uh, their uh, preparation and whatever you study won't be enough you will never cover the whole syllabus you are, there is no uh, particular syllabus to say as such so every day even if you work so hard you are still missing out on things so it's very easy to get demotivated and there was a lot of pressure at that time and i remember uh, my friend uh, she held my hand on the day i was going for prelims in 2018 which was my second attempt and uh, she prayed for me and i started crying because i was so overwhelmed by the whole thing so i couldn't make it at that time also um, but a lot of things changed after that failure because uh, then i completely realized that you know i had given so much power to this examination this was actually just an examination you had just have to understand the examination find out what its basic uh, needs are and you need to provide it and then you can clear it so i tried uh, going back to my hobbies i used to dance so i went uh, back and started taking dance lessons i took a bit of kung fu lessons i went for an uh, evening walk so i made sure uh, my lifestyle was uh, very balanced uh, then i did a lot of meditation gratitude journal all these things were incorporated into my life and then naturally i started following my uh, curiosity to learn so there's a lot of things you can learn in civil services examination so i went with what did i intuitively feel uh, was needed so i think what kept me going was that uh, Um, it's it's so when you say what kept you going you usually say it's determination so it's not like you just wake up one day and decide okay today i will be determined to, to do everything it's actually very very small steps you take in the right direction that helps you so it eventually gets you somewhere so you don't know what is happening at that point of time so you need a lot of faith in yourself in your ability and in god so that uh, it comes out right at the end so i think that was my biggest lesson and this, this this was my whole journey of failures and success in this examination that was very inspiring ma'am according to your perspective what is success in one's life or who can be considered as a successful person mm, i think uh, success is very subjective it depends on uh, to define it as for example what is success for one person may not be success for another person uh if if it is a if um so it depends on where exactly you are at life so i think uh, that's a very very general question and it's something you have to figure out for yourself so it's a very personal question every each one of us needs to ask ourselves so what is success for you at the end uh, what do you think is uh, uh, what do you think will be uh, your life if you have to say it was successful and i think uh, in my experience after all these years i would say a person who is successful is not somebody who has uh, gotten a lot of academic laurels or who has gotten a very good job or uh, all these big big things are uh, not ex- exactly success i would say i think it's a life is successful if you are able to live every day with a small and you are able to appreciate small small happiness in life like having a cup of coffee now during this covid times we know everything we used to take granted has suddenly been taken away from us just like hanging out with friends for some 10 minutes which was very uh, which was something which we should have been grateful for now it's no longer <laughs> possible for us to do so i think uh, it's the small small things that counts in one's life rather than big events big events do happen but but uh, what do you have control is over the small small things uh, okay ma'am we know that uh, you have chosen ias any particular reason in opting ias and what are the novel ideas that you have for the development of the country to be implemented once you get into civil services okay um i gave uh, my first preference as indian administrative service uh, because uh, when i was in school i had read 
this particular book of uh, Malayatu Ramakrishnan. We have one book to was called Bering, but there was another book called Yandram, which in, in which which he had uh, told about uh, what exactly the life and challenges and what was the the life of essentially of a bureaucrat was, and it was I found it very intriguing. I had heard nothing like that before, so that that was there. Uh, that, that was there as an initial attraction to me. Secondly, Indian Administrative Service offers you a huge diversity of job profiles. Like you can be working in education, then you can go to irrigation, then you can go to the district, you can go at the highest level of policy making so the both horizontally and vertically there is a lot for you to explore and i like that uh, diversity of experience uh, which it can provide and uh, i think as in terms of ideas i think if i do get appointed uh, somewhere as a, as a as a person who can effectively take decisions i think my focus would be on uh, education as such i think there are a lot of uh, issues, both in terms of accessibility to education. There are new challenges in terms of uh, the digital education era. But I think there is also a lot of work that needs to be done in the quality of education. That is the need uh, for the shifting from the rote learning to a more critical thinking perspective. Uh, so these are the kind of uh, ideas I think that inspires. Uh, Ma'am, attaining the most influential authors uh, in India right now, how will it boost your uh, personal life and help uh, social welfare? Mm, uh, okay, I think um, I think like that question is essentially about finding the balance. So, uh, as an individual who has a certain set of skills, I think uh, if I'm placed uh, placed in the service, I think uh, I do have an interest to figure out different things and uh, work with that diversity. I think uh, that. Uh, that experience of uh, helping a lot of people uh, and contributing to social welfare and giving back to the society that can be a huge uh, motivator for me to keep doing the good work so it is a balance so I get a lot of work satisfaction from it uh, hopefully and I get to learn a lot of new things and to uh, help a lot of people along the way and uh, in terms of uh, in terms of utilizing my skills I hope uh, that my ideas and my implementation and uh, the kind of work which God will enable me to do will, will uh, help uh, bring social welfare as well. So I think it's a balance. Given that the fact that you're responsible for the life of countless people, is that something that intimidates you or inspires you or challenges you? I think uh, it's all of those things, uh, I would say. It's a little intimidating if you think about the scale at one go and you think that, oh, okay, I have to be responsible for a lot of things. But for me personally, I think uh, responsibility gives me a lot of groundedness rather than being scared. I think I can expect certain moments in the future where uh, this might be overwhelming for me. But I think um, so far my philosophy or what I have journeyed, uh, learned in this whole journey is to take everything one step by step. So I am not thinking that much in the big picture that uh, I have to be responsible. But I think uh, if I do a small, small things right and get a lot of uh, small things done right, I think naturally my responsibility as an officer or uh, towards the public would be automatically fulfilled. So that's what I'm thinking. Many times we come across questions like, who is your role model? Who is the most inspiring and influential person that you have met? But my question to you is that what are the qualities that a person should have to inspire you? Okay, uh, I think uh, for any person to inspire me, what I would essentially see is the, their authenticity. That is uh, the most important thing. Like, are they being honest about their experience and are they being completely open to whatever uh, they learned or could they have learned. So that is the kind of um, most attractive and inspiring quality that I see in people. Um, I also find people who are very, very compassionate thinking about others and uh, who are very selfless. That is also a very inspiring quality to have. Something I hope I can implement more and more in the days to come in my life as well. Ma'am, we know that for a student, choosing a career is not an easy task. Now you have cracked one of the most difficult exams. And it would be nice to know uh, the idea or concept about your career when you were a school student, just like all of us. Okay. 
okay uh, that's a very good question i think uh, yes that is a very uh, big question for anybody to figure out and sometimes it might take years uh, if i have to talk about my own experiences i have gone uh, i have thought about a lot of things i wanted to become like uh, when i was in school i think by 9th and 10th uh, by 8th or 7th i had thought okay maybe i would give ias a try by 9th and 10th i think i had more of an affinity towards science so i think i wanted to be a scientist but uh, in 11th and 12th i like chemistry so i went for chemical engineering but i figured out that you know i d- i did not have the interest or the patience to become a scientist in the field of chemical engineering so that's when i left it and uh, so so for me i think it was like a lot of decisions here and there and and even after graduation i did uh, think about uh, joining for an mba first year an mba before uh, start starting to prepare for this examination i gave my cat i did not study that well but i did clear i am indoor selection but i did not go for it because i wanted to prepare for this particular thing so um like i said uh, so it's it's a very i know when you say that it's a very confusing choice to make uh, so sometimes i think uh, i don't think anybody can tell you what exactly you should become actually my mother is a doctor so she wanted actually i see what she wanted me to uh, pursue mbb as a uh as my graduation but uh, i was very clear i did not want to become a doctor but i was not sure what actually did i want to become so uh, it's it's essentially a question for you to figure it out but uh, one advantage that uh, people like you have in these days compared to my time when we did not have a lot of access to the internet or we did not have a lot of resources or uh, we could not even meet that much people in that small town of thirunal at that time but today that is not the situation you have a lot of resources at your disposal you have a lot of uh, sites like coursera you have a lot of uh, massive open online courses where you can figure out uh, or you can get a taste of what exactly are you going to pursue so for me when uh, i thought about chemical engineering i thought it was chemistry but it was nothing like chemistry it was completely different but for you i think uh, if you have that interest to figure out what exactly you do you want there are ways in which uh, you can at least uh, experience or taste what uh, exactly are you going to tackle in that particular field and uh, once you know and secondly i think uh, it, it would be very difficult for you to justify your decision even to yourself or others if it's a something something of an unconventional decision you are taking you are taking so there are certain uh, careers which are considered safe by everybody like uh, the professional careers which were considered very safe by everybody even the fam- fam- there is a, fam- a lot of family pressure might be there for you to pursue it but um, if you are very sure that that is not who you want to become and you have been blessed and god has given you that idea that this is what you should become you should you should never take it for granted because that kind of clarity of thought uh, which you get at your early early years like i think what you know in school is actually a uh, very important like the kind of intuition you have to direct you to the field in which you might excel it's very good at the school level itself so try to find out more about it whatever field you are in and remember that you might be working in this field for maybe like 20 30 years so try to picture yourself in that situation like what can you learn from that is this the kind of life that you are expecting to lead or can you be useful to the society by pursuing this particular uh, uh, career so there's a lot of things for you to unpack in that so i guess a lot of introspection is needed and a lot of research is needed on your part like you can do that now you can go out and try and find out uh, people maybe online or you can try and find out courses you are interested in try and find out how the life is for different people and based on that make a career choice and if any and if at all like you have you you have a clear determination that this is what you have become and uh, you, it is there for you in your heart uh, pursue it with your all your strength even if there is self doubt or everything uh please uh, you should understand that that particular thought is very hard to come by for people because it's very easy to get confused these days and if you do have that uh, guidance inside you please follow it during the time span of achieving your goal uh how did you manage to be motivated and consistent okay uh i think uh, staying motivated is a very it's a very it's a process it's not something like taking an injection you can maybe get a shot of adrenaline or motivation if you look at some online videos like so there are so many inspiring ideas for you to come by i think that sort of motivation is very transient like you might have it for some time you might be motivated like maybe for a day maximum 
and then it's gone so uh, so so i think uh, motivation is a very um, what to say a fickle way <laughs> it might not come for you all the time so but uh, what essentially can lead you is uh, having a disciplined lifestyle so you know if you took a task so have that uh, work ethic or work goal inside you so for me i had uh, decided to take this particular task under hand and i knew that i had to finish it so even though i failed in the first two attempts i sort of uh, somehow found that groundedness inside me to realize that there is a lot i have to learn both personally as well as in terms of information from this particular process so i think it was that uh, grounded feeling that keeping yourself very grounded knowing the present uh, what what exactly is the reality uh, but at the same time staying very hopeful that whatever you do it will work out so and that's what i said uh, there is a lot of uncertainty in preparing for the civil service examination that is the main challenge i feel about this examination because there are a number of stages and uh, the competition is also very intense and um, and even if you were academically good before or i have seen people from iits and iits maybe writing for many many years and somebody else with maybe not that much background might crack it in the first attempt so there are a lot of stories going on a lot of things happening it's very chaotic for you to place in your head what exactly is going on so uh, so i think uh, what i figured out along the way was that i had to find my own journey so there were a set of uh, things i had to learn both personally from this experience so i tried focusing on that and i took everything day one day at a time that was very important for me because it was very hard for you me to put uh, a timeline on all the things that was happening especially during corona times because the only thing that was certain about this examination was at least the date but uh, then the date itself became uncertain because of corona so the so the whole situation was like that so you had to uh, roll with the punches so stay stay in that sort of flow so that's what i figured out so you know uh, take it one day at a time uh, then uh, try to maintain a proper lifestyle a proper routine and uh, in that flow you know be sincere to your work boy because you are studying for this examination make sure you finish that work so that should be your work ethic i think that is that sort of internal motivation this is something for everybody to figure out for themselves uh, what 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 is the motivation for you to uh, crack this examination so that's what happened for me okay perfect okay. so you have told us that okay. you are in quarantine right now Yeah. So as soon as yeah. the major problem we are facing right now is uh, time management. So we would like to hear from you, such an inspiration person. Uh, how do you manage your time? Okay. Uh, time management is a very, very valuable skill. I I would suggest. Uh, so I usually tell people uh, for cracking this examination, you have to view it like a pyramid. so the base of your pyramid like i said is the attitude or the mentality you have uh, and the middle part of the pyramid is the skills and the top part is knowledge so knowledge is actually the least important part it's basically your skills and your attitude that counts a lot and in terms of skill a very valuable skill to have not just in the terms of this examination but in terms of your whole life is to have proper time management skills i think uh, what i figured out about uh, time management skills is that uh, i think i have been saying that point over and over like uh, try and be break tackle very small things so if you look at all the things and make a list of everything you have to do you might get overwhelmed and i used to do this and i would do nothing so i might have like 10 things to do i would be so overwhelmed by seeing the list i would become much more lazy and i would not do any of those things so that used to be my step when i was much more relaxed and while i was in college so that that kind of thing actually sticks on to you so it's very so why i said it's a skill a skill is something that needs practice so we say it's time management skills because you need practice to incorporate that into your lifestyle so try and find so next time you have something to work on which is on a deadline or you need to have a proper time management i think try and uh, break it down if it's very overwhelming for you try and break down the different parts of the particular uh, uh, project or whatever activity you have to do and uh, do them one at a time so you know uh, that way it becomes handleable and when you finish one particular part of that uh, project you become more encouraged to uh, go to the next part so it's that uh, small small steps along the way also helps in proper time management and uh, for me i don't think i was never one of those people uh, who used to go by the dot and dot on the time i used to be punctual i was always punctual you need to respect other people's time but uh, for me i used to uh, look at the 
quality of work in terms of uh, uh, in terms of um, the output rather than the amount of time i spend it so it's a balance uh, so for example in in cracking the civil service examination you have about 20 questions to write and uh, for uh, a three hours so it becomes very difficult so you need to improve the quality of your average work so that's what i found out like you might have a certain time uh, so sometime you might do some excellent work like your quality would be very high but otherwise your quality would always be average so try to improve the average quality of your work so that way you can balance both time as well as the quality of your work so is what i'm saying is very abstract so you need to because this is like uh, teaching you how to swim uh, through a webinar i can't teach you how to swim or how to ride a bike through a webinar you have to figure it out for yourself so be mindful of how you're spending time and uh, take it uh, step by step and uh, try to incorporate that into your lifestyle it's it's a very valuable skill it would go uh, it will help you for years so this is as students this is one of the time in which you can develop such a very valuable skill to conclude our section what advice or suggestion would you like to share with the future aspirants okay uh, since the audience are mainly school going students i would uh, tell you a few other things uh, so first of all um, i would say like uh, this is an examination this is just an examination and uh, you can crack any examination if you are able to understand the demand of the examination and you are able to bring your own skills up to that level if both of this correlates you will have a definitely see success in that particular examination given everything else goes well by god's grace so uh, for if if uh, you are an aspirant at this stage i think that's a very important advantage that you have you have time for me when i started to prepare and when i came back into this preparation was after my graduation and i had lost uh, a few good years here and there thinking about what to do and uh, which one uh, to be whether i should be sure about doing it so if you're sure and uh, i think there are some things you need to work on and number one would be why do you want to join this particular service what attracts you be very honest with yourself is it the glamour or is it all the fame or the attention what exactly uh, attracts you to this particular particular uh, service and figure out is that what you want so for that you can maybe read a lot of books uh, see maybe documentaries a lot of uh, resources are available online so do your research and find out why you want to do this uh, secondly i think uh, if you want to do it and if you are sure that you want to do it do two things if you are in school first of all learn your school portions very thoroughly for example uh, but we uh, we pursue the icsc syllabus basically people suggest the ncert textbooks because uh, since that is a uh, textbook suggested by cbse a lot of questions might be directly lifted from ncerts and coming from an icsc syllabus ncerts are not that big of a challenge uh, for you people so uh, you can start reading the ncerts a little bit because uh, this way at this stage it's easier for you have time for that and and uh, you are learning things which are relevant so if, if you read the ncrts now it would make much more sense to you and this would go a long way in helping your uh, found building your foundation for tackling this examination secondly focus on your studies at school i won't say uh, i wouldn't say spend all the time you have to study at school there are a lot of other things in school uh, which are very interesting focus uh, also on your extra curriculars develop good hobbies of uh, uh, develop your social skills your communication skills so there is a lot of things you can develop at school so be very active and uh, involved in school as well so this helps in developing your overall personality which is another very big element uh, that is tested uh, in this particular kind of examination then another thing you can start doing right now is start reading the newspaper and uh, when you read the newspaper uh, you can uh, do the you can read the hindu that is what everybody reads uh, for preparing for this examination it would be very difficult if you start reading the hindu at the get go because they have a particular style and approach towards things and it might not make any sense if you go for it directly but keep reading you know whatever little you understand it's okay if there are difficult difficult words google them uh, find out what they means so just be curious to learn so 
that would be my final point uh, before that uh, reading about the newspaper i want to add one more point that is whatever you read in the newspaper right so try to figure out how it affects you in your life for example there is a new education policy that is coming up so try and think about it like how is that going to affect your school life how is that going to affect uh, the people in your life how is that going to affect from from your personal life you should go to the society so how does that affect the society in general so that kind of an attitude towards thinking is uh, very helpful so that is what we call an understanding needed for tackling this examination so have that uh, develop that quality of reflecting what is the implication of this particular uh, news item that is coming and uh, finally i uh, like i went to the point before that was uh, always have a curiosity to learn like you know don't make it a chore for yourself to do this paper don't make it like a it shouldn't be like hard work it should be interesting work whatever you're doing Uh, let it let that curiosity guide you like if you are interested in reading maybe history go back and read some ncert history so whatever that guides you at that point of time and uh, be very ready to accept your mistakes and your failure it's essentially a trial and error everything humans have ever done and achieved all throughout these years is based on trial and error so you would also have to implement that in your life so be ready to learn be very grounded and have a lot of faith in god and in yourself because uh, that is ultimately uh, the biggest thing in dealing with uncertainty and uh, take it one day at a time i think these are lessons which are relevant for any kind of uh, <laughs> project you take on not just civil services so that's about it that that would be my advice at this point of time ma'am one last question to uh, yes. can you share with us one thought or a quote or even some inspirational talks which you have heard which you like the most and which you would follow throughout your life okay uh yes uh, i am actually very much interested uh, in sen buddhist koans sen buddhist koans are uh, these are very short short stories uh, based on the sen uh, buddhist philosophy the sen philosophy originates in japan so as we know buddhism started in india it went to china and from there it went to japan and they have their own in- interpretation of it which is called the sen philosophy so there was i had uh, gotten this particular book and there was this one particular uh, story which actually inspired me a lot so there was this uh, i'll i'll just tell the story it's a very small stories and it's very confusing uh, these stories are very confusing but uh, they they show you the contradiction inside your head and how you need to approach it so so there was this very famous sen master called nan yin so uh, one day a professor this this is a very qualified professor he has acquired multiple degrees he is respected throughout the world so this professor goes to nanin and tells him okay i have studied a lot of things now i want to know what exactly is sen philosophy so you would have to teach me so then nanin says okay so uh, do you want tea so then the professor will be like okay yes i want tea then he just keep nanin nanin will keep a cup in front of the professor and he'll start pouring tea he'll continue pouring and the cup starts to overflow and then suddenly the professor says what are you doing the cup is overflowing and but nanin continues to uh, pour so the professor becomes very confused and then uh, he says that um, uh, professor your mind is actually like this cup it is overflowing you have a lot of things in your head you think uh, you know you you if you believe that you know you have a lot of things inside you so how can i fill an overflowing cup it's already overflowing so what the point of the story is that be very grounded and be ready to unlearn be ready to uh, accept your mistakes and uh, and learning is all about uh, um, making mistakes and learn and uh, then acquiring new knowledge so that is one story which i find uh, very inspiring wherever you go whatever successes you achieve uh, it's always remember to it's always wise to remember that you know keep your cup empty at all times thank you ma'am that was truly inspiring on behalf of all students of mtrs i would like to thank you for joining us and spending your valuable time with us sharing your experience and enriching us with important facts that will truly inspire and guide future aspirants we sincerely hope that you will succeed in accomplishing all your dream goals and we wish you a bright career ahead thank you thank you thank you and thanks a lot for everyone involved and sis and special thanks to our principal uh, mr rajina Thank you also for arranging this particular uh, event. Thank you. Thank you all.
and thank you for the very well thought out questions i was so surprised seeing the questions uh, all the other interviews i had nobody had asked such uh, very hard hitting and relevant questions so good job on that also <laughs> keep thinking like that yeah that would take you, you a long way <laughs> well, yeah.